Okay, now that we've talked about general equations of lines in, in the coordinate plane, I want to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines in the coordinate plane and how that relates to what we've been talking about. So, first, we know, probably we should define parallel and perpendicular. Parallel lines are two lines that would go on forever without intersecting. Okay, hopefully we know what that means. Perpendicular means two lines intersect at right angles. So, for example, Two parallel lines in the coordinate plane might look something like this. Okay, they'll go on forever and they'll never cross. Perpendicular lines might look, do this in orange, might look like this. Where they intersect to create a right angle. Okay, so, the condition for whether two lines are parallel in the coordinate plane are the two slopes of the lines have to be equal. So we'll call this M1 equals M2. So, again, if I have my two lines here, this may have a slope of M1, this one has a slope M2, and if M1 equals M2, those two lines are parallel. And remember how we get that. You remember our equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. So if we know the equations of, of these two lines, and we know that the slopes are equal, we know the lines are parallel. Now, a little bit different in the case of perpendicular. Perpendicular lines, the relationship looks like this. m1 times m2 has to equal negative 1. Okay, so let's call this m1 in this case, and this m2. If we multiply those two slopes together, if they equal negative 1, if that product equals negative 1, then the two lines have to be perpendicular. Okay, so there's a number of ways that we might see problems related to this. One is if we get a couple equations of lines. For example, if I gave you y equals 2x plus 7 and y equals 2x minus 8 and ask you to tell me whether those two lines are parallel or perpendicular or neither, in this case you're going to look at them and say, well the slope of this line is 2, the slope of this line is also 2, right? Both are 2. And since they're the same, since the slopes are the same, the lines have to be parallel. Okay. Now, maybe I give you a different one. I said y equals 3x minus 1, y equals negative 1 third, x plus 2. Okay. I can look at those two lines, figure out what the slope is, in this case, call that m1 and this one m2. The slope of this line is just 3. The slope of this line is negative 1 third. Okay, definitely not equal. So not parallel, but let's check this one. Let's see if they multiply together to be negative 1. I'm going to take my two slopes, 3 times negative 1 third. That equals negative 3 over 3, or negative 1. Okay, so if I multiply these two slopes together, I get a negative 1, which means they have to be perpendicular. Okay, that's one way you might see this. You get two equations of, of, of line, you decide, are the slopes equal to each other? Do they multiply together to be negative 1, or neither? Okay, that's how you're going to tell are they perpendicular sorry, parallel, perpendicular, or none of the above. Okay, now, a little offshoot of that is if I give you something like this. Okay, equations of lines like 3y minus 4x equals 7, and say 4y plus 3x equals 14. 
and I say, tell me whether those two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Now in this case, these lines aren't in slope intercept form. They don't look like this. We need to get them to look like that. So we're going to take each of these lines. First, I'll do this one. Okay. I'm going to add 4x to both sides. So it becomes 3y equals 4x plus 7. Okay, we're still not there. We still don't have y alone on this side. So now we're going to divide both sides by 3. And when we do this, we have to be careful because that whole side gets divided by 3. Okay, so this now becomes y on this side equals 4 thirds x, right? 4 thirds times x plus 7 over 3. 7 over 3. That's the equation of this line in slope intercept form. Now, let me make sure that that's clear. That's that line. Now, this line, let's do right there. Same thing. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides this time. So we get 4y equals negative 3x plus 14. And divide both sides by 4. 4, we get y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 14 over 4. Okay, now we have both lines, and hopefully you can follow this now, it's getting a little bit busy. This line has a slope of call it m1 equals 4 thirds. Right? It's the number that comes before the x. This line, this one here, has a slope of negative 3 fourths. They are two slopes. Negative 3 fourths and positive 4 thirds definitely do not equal each other. They're not parallel. Let's see if they're perpendicular. Okay. I'll do this right here. We're going to take 4 thirds times negative 3 fourths. equals negative 12 over 12, which does equal negative 1. Okay, so these two lines that we had up here, we found out what their slopes were first, and then we found out they multiply together to be negative 1, so they have to be perpendicular. Okay, that's how you're going to do a problem like that. Now, another thing you may see is, and we'll start slow here, if I give you that the slope of line 1 is, call it 5 6, okay, and I say I need you to tell me what the slope of the line is that's perpendicular to that line, okay, I could also ask you to tell me the slope of the line that would be parallel to that line, that's easy, it's just the same slope, it would be 5, 6 to be parallel, but in this case, I'm asking you to tell me the slope of the line that would be perpendicular to that line, with that slope, and how do we do that? Well, we know that m1 times m2 has to equal negative 1. Okay, there's a really easy way. You could set it up in the equation and solve it, but it's actually a lot simpler than that. We're going to fi find out what the negative reciprocal is of this. Reciprocal means that I just take my fraction and flip it. So it becomes 6 over 5 instead of 5 over 6. Okay, so the reciprocal would be 6 over 5. The negative reciprocal would be negative 6 over 5. Okay, so Perpendicular lines, and we'll check this in just a second, but perpendicular lines have to have slopes that are negative reciprocals. Okay, and again, we take our fraction, flip it, and then put a negative sign in front of it. And now, now let's check. Does m1 times m2 equal negative 1? We have 5 over 6 times negative 6 over 5. That's negative 30 on top, and just regular 30 on bottom, which is negative 1. Okay, and that'll work all the time.
what if, what if I had given you m1 equals negative two-thirds, okay, and ask for a, a line that's perpendicular to that, we'd have to have m2 be the negative reciprocal, so take the reciprocal, it's, it'd be negative three over two, and then we put a negative sign in front of it, there's already a negative sign in front of it, so what do we do? Two negatives equals a positive, so it's positive three halves, and I'll let you check that and make sure that it does equal negative one if you multiply those two slopes together. Okay, one more example, and this is a tricky one. This is what trips a lot of people up. If I give you a line, y equals 2x minus 1. I give you that line and I say, I want you to write the equation of a line that's perpendicular to that line. Okay, so we want you to write the equation of a line perpendicular to y equals 2x minus 1, and it goes through, through point, we'll, we'll say point 0.34. Okay, so you can sketch this out really quick if you want to. You don't have to, but if you do want to, draw yourself a little quarter plane. Okay, we know we want to be perpendicular to 2x minus 1, so the y-intercept of this line is negative 1. The slope is 2, so a quick sketch of this line is going to be something like this. And we want to be perpendicular, and it goes through point 0.34. Okay, so we go through that point, we're perpendicular. So we want the equation of, of this line right here. Okay, we'll put a question mark there. Okay, now, that's great if you want to sketch it out. I, I really encourage that. But in this case, you don't have to. Okay, what we need to do is... Look at this right here. Y equals mx plus b. We need to write our equation of a line, so we're going to look at this. And to write the equation of a line, we know we need to figure out what m is and what b is. m our slope and b our y-intercept. So let's attack these one at a time. First, we're going to look at m. What does our slope have to be if we're perpendicular to this line? Okay, the strategy here is, is figure out what you need, in this case M and B, and then how do you go and get it? Okay, we know we're perpendicular to this line. We know that perpendicular slopes are negative reciprocals like we just talked about. So the slope of this line, we'll call it M1, equals 2, right? Or if you wanted to make it a little easier, it's 2 over 1. Okay, M2 then, the slope that we're really interested in, the slope that's perpendicular to that, is the negative reciprocal. It's going to be negative one half. Okay, I'm going to circle that because that's going to be the slope of our line. Okay, easy, right? I figured out I needed my slope. I went, figured out what my slope was. It's got to be perpendicular to two, so it's negative one half. Okay, now. My y-intercept. This one's a little bit trickier. I need to find b. So in this case, I'm going to take this equation, y equals mx plus b, and I'm going to plug in everything that I can. Okay, that includes my slope, which I just figured out, and a y and an x. Okay, a y and an x, I don't have that, or do I? Do I know that an xy coordinate that's on the line is, is that, so I can take 3 comma 4 and plug in 3 for x and 4 for y. Let's try it. The idea here is that we're going to plug in everything. y, m, x, everything but b. But that's going to allow us to find out what b has to be. Okay, so in this case, y. y is 4. 4 equals m. m was negative 1 half. x x is 3, and b we don't know. b is going to stay just b. Okay, so 4 equals negative 1 half times 3, 
That's negative 3 halves plus b. So we're going to add 3 halves to both sides. So 4 plus 3 over 2, that's going to be, let's see, 5.5. You can put it in decimal or you can keep it in fraction. It's up to you. I'm putting it in decimal. And that equals b. Okay, 5.5 equals b. Oh, good. I found b. Easy. Now, I know M, I know B. Those were the two things I needed. I went out and I found them. Now I can write my equation, right? This equation becomes Y equals negative one half, that's M, times X plus five and a half, five point five. And that the answer. That's the equation of the line that's perpendicular to y equals 2x minus 1, and it goes through that point, 3, 4. Quick review, because this is a lot of steps, and, and people have a tendency to get lost here. We figured out, to write the equation of our line, we need y equals mx plus b. So really what we need there is m and b. Those are the two things that we need to find. We found m using the negative reciprocal because we know we're perpendicular to that slope. We found B by plugging in everything that we could. That was the M we just found. That was the X and Y coordinate that we go through. We found B, and then we write the equation of our line using M and B. Okay, so I think that's enough examples for now. Uh, this is, is pretty much the gamut of things that you'll see for different types of problems related to parallel and perpendicular in this chapter of geometry.